Hi friends, welcome back to my new video. Today we are going to discuss about exhaust gas recirculation system which will be provided in the atom boil or ice engine. Generally exhaust gas recirculation system is provided for reducing NOx which is available in the exhaust system. Okay, so whenever we want to reduce a NOx then and then only exhaust gas recirculation will be used otherwise the exhaust gas recirculation system is not at all used. In front of you there is a construction so we are going to discuss about construction, working then we are going to discuss about advantages and disadvantages of exhaust gas recirculation system. In front of you you are having an this is a cylinder this is cylinder and this is the inlet wall this is the exhaust wall and this is the piston the blue color pipeline that is the inlet manifold or inlet pipeline you can say and the orange color or yellow color pipeline is the uh, exhaust outlet exhaust outlet from which exhaust gases are taken outside by the name we can understand that what is the exhaust gas recirculation system in which exhaust gases are once again recirculated to the system in order to reduce the NOx so if you check here there is a pipeline there is a pipeline coming out of exhaust pipeline exhaust manifold and this pipeline is recirculated and coming to the inlet once again in between what we are having is the EZR wall which can be controlled by electronic control unit okay so here if this wall is open the easier wall is open the gases will enter into the inlet manifold and it will enter into the combustion chamber if the easier wall is closed then the gases will not enter into the inlet manifold and will not go to the combustion chamber so if this wall is open the exhaust gases may start moving as like this i will show the path of exhaust gases it will be moving like this one and then finally it comes to the combustion chamber over here Okay, so this is the path of exhaust gas recirculation system. Now, uh, the question comes how it reduces the NOx produced by the engine. So generally, uh, before discussing how it reduces, we should know how NOx is generated, NOx, how NOx is generated that you must be knowing. Generally, we are knowing that NOx, the NOx or nitrogen is inert at the normal temperature. Inert means that it will not take a participation in the, any kind of reaction. But if the temperature goes to very high, then what happens? This nitrogen gas becomes an active and that will get combined with the oxygen and forms oxy oxides. Okay. So here, in this particular combustion chamber, if temperature goes beyond the limit, then and then only nitrogen oxide will form. Otherwise, it will not form. The best way of reducing NOx is keep the temperature in limit. If the temperature goes beyond limit, obvi um, obviously what will happen? The NOx will be generated now next question comes how exhaust gas recirculation maintain the temperature of this system so that nox will not be produced for understanding of this i have given you sub example that here the specific heat of air is given so the air specific heat is what about 1 kilojoule per kg kelvin where a specific heat of exhaust gas is how much so we have taken a two element one is air another is exhaust gas and exhaust gas specific it is how much about 37 okay so you can see that the specific heat of exhaust gas is 37 times more than that of the specific heat of air so for the specific heat of air i am going to neglect this 5 and i am considering that it is 1 what's mean by specific heat specific heat is amount of heat required to raise the temperature of that particular element by 1 degree celsius okay means what when the air takes 1 kilojoule of heat its temperature will increase 1 degree celsius so means what if you are having an air with you which is of mass 1 kg and if you supply 1 kilojoule of heat to this then its temperature rise will be 1 degree celsius according to definition of specific heat similarly if this definition I apply to the exhaust gases when exhaust gas takes 37 kilojoule of heat its temperature will increase by 1 degree celsius so here how much amount of heat is required is 37 so if I supply 37 kilojoule then rise in temperature is 1 degree Celsius if I supply 1 kilojoule to the air then rise in temperature is 1 degree Celsius now another example if you take if these 37 kilojoule amount of heat if I supply to the air then what will happen the air temperature will increase by how much 37 degree Celsius why 37 degree Celsius because as I told you that if it takes 1 kilojoule then it increases by 1 degree Celsius as I am supplying 37 it will increase by 37 degree Celsius whereas exhaust gas will 
increases temperature by 1 degree Celsius. From this concept, you should understand that even though I supply more amount of heat to the exhaust gases or if exhaust gas absorbs more heat, then also the rise in temperature is very less compared to air fuel mixture. Okay, so by using this particular concept, the amount of heat absorbed here by the exhaust gas is more then temperature will be less means what when we supply air plus fuel from this side the air plus fuel will enter into this one whereas from this side what is there there is the entry of the exhaust gas so both will get mixed and we are having mixture of what here we are having mixture of air then we are having mixture of fuel and then we are having mixture of exhaust gases so the air fuel and exhaust gases comes into the system and here there will be combustion of the fuel occurs after combustion of fuel the heat will be generated and out of that heat some heat is absorbed by exhaust gases when heat is absorbed by exhaust gases its rise in temperature is very less what is the reason reason is this high specific heat so even though exhaust gas has absorbed the heat the rise in temperature is very less means overall temperature of this system remains very less and as temperature of system remains very less the nitrogen oxides will not form because we are controlling the temperature by using exhaust gases which is supplied to the combustion chamber okay so that's why nox will not be produced and nox will not be available here in the exhaust system okay so you should understand here that exhaust gases in the mixture absorbs heat whereas rise in the temperature is very less that is the important concept for understanding of exhaust gas recirculation system this is all about i uh, told working and construction of exhaust gas recirculation system what is its advantages advantage ezr is efficient process for reducing nox level so nox can be very easily reduced by ezr the impact of ezr on engine is minimal means what when we provide an ezr system the impact occurring on the engine is very less means effect on the engine is very less these are what advantages of ezr system what is disadvantage of system? It reduces available oxygen in the cylinder. So when we use an EGR system, amount of oxygen present in the cylinder will be less. Reduces peak power available for the engine. Peak power means what? Maximum power which is available from the engine. If uh, Before providing an EGR, if 100 kW energy is produced, then after providing EGR, it may not produce 100 kW. There will be reduction in the maximum power or peak power availability from the engine. That's another disadvantage. The EZR wall cannot respond instantly to changes in demand. So EZR wall, sometimes it is not sensitive, so it will not respond quickly and cannot achieve perfect mixing in each cylinder. Means we cannot achieve a homogeneous mixture of air plus fuel plus exhaust gases by the EZR system. These are the disadvantages in that major disadvantage is this one that there is a peak power availability will be less. So in this lecture, we discuss about working advantages and disadvantages of EGR system. I hope you all understood. Thank you very much for listening.